Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. So it, it feels weird at times when we're looking at the video game landscape and wondering who's going to acquire who, what's happening, who's making moves. You know Nintendo obviously acquired Next Level Games not that long ago, but that was a common sense purchase. The ownership wanted out. Next Level Games is making Nintendo games exclusively for like a decade plus, so it was just a common sense purchase for Nintendo. But there are other times that something might seem common sense and might seem like it makes sense but it doesn't mean that that's the way that the company and the people behind that company want to go now today we're actually talking about a story that isn't necessarily about nintendo at all but is still really interesting how this came to be and why people started to believe it and i get it but also it's sort of a lesson in hey you know Maybe sometimes when you speculate certain things, it doesn't always mean what you think it means. Now, if you're enjoying this video, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like and uh, subscribe to the channel. We're on our road to 80,000 subscribers. Uh, we have a big summer show coming up that I hope all of you guys want to attend. More details to come on that later once we get the dates for Summer Game Fest. Now, moving on, let's talk about what we're talking about. And this is about, well... Hideo Kojima, you guys might know his name, he was the maker of Death Stranding, Silent Hill, a bunch of games back in the old Konami days, uh, he hasn't worked at Konami in a while, he actually kind of left Konami on not the greatest of terms, founded his own studio and ended up making Death Stranding, and there's been a lot of rumors and speculation circling over the last few months that he is going to be joining PlayStation Studios, his studio would be joining PlayStation Studios, and uh, look, there's, he obviously has an affinity to PlayStation. He's made a lot of games for Sony, uh, at least games for Sony's platform, but that's not actually what's happening. Uh, and the man himself shot it down. So let's, let's actually look at this. So over here in IGN, it says, Hideo Kojima says Kojima Productions will remain independent after tweeting PlayStation Studios banner. Hideo Kojima denies joining PlayStation Studios. So obviously, you know, he tweeted out a banner, tweeted out that they're moving out of their current uh, location, made people all think, oh, they're becoming part of PlayStation. Now, to be fair, there's reports out there from Jeff Grubb that Xbox and Kojima are actually in partnership right now on a future game, uh, but that's neither here nor there because you could still have that and be acquired because that deal could have been done before the acquisition. You know, sort of like you know, that like with Deathloop or whatever that got made for PlayStation after uh, Bethesda was acquired. So anyways, Hideo Kojima mysteriously posted a photo of PlayStation Studios before clarifying that his studio will remain independent. Around 1 p.m. in the afternoon Japan time, Kojima posted a picture of the PlayStation Studios banner with games from all of Sony's first party studios and also Death Stranding. Very interesting. This cryptic tweet immediately kicked off speculation that Kojima Productions officially joined PlayStation Studios, which makes sense because all the other included parts of the image are from PlayStation Studios. Kojima followed up 10 minutes later by clarifying Kojima Productions is still an independent company. In the follow-up tweet, independently translated by IGN, Kojima writes, I seem to have invited misinterpretation, but Koji Pro has been and will continue to be an independent production studio. IGN reached out to Kojima for further clarification. Kojima Productions was founded in 2015 as an independent studio after previously being an in-house team within Konami, Kojima's previous company. To date, the studio's only title remains Death Stranding, a game starring The Walking Dead's Norman Reedus as Porter, who must walk across the post-apocalyptic United States to reunite the country. With its post-modern aesthetic and cinematic storytelling, Death Stranding was peak Kojima to divide critical reception, and expanded universe for PlayStation 5 was later released. Console and PC are under the name Death Stranding's Director's Cut. A possible explanation for his tweet could be from Kojima Productions' already close relationship with Sony. Kojima announced his new studio alongside Sony at 2015 PlayStation E3 presentation, and Death Stranding uses a version of Guerrilla Games' Decima engine. Speculation over new PlayStation acquisitions is at an all-time high, and Sony is currently on a buying spree, having acquired teams like House Marquee, Valkyrie Entertainment as well. Sony also purchased Bungie, though the Destiny developer is not part of PlayStation Studios. So I find this to be quite interesting because obviously the close ties and connections are there, and Kojima's had no problem, um, you know, basically associating his development company with Sony using even one of Sony's own in-house engines. However, 
that doesn't mean he doesn't want to be independent. I kind of liken this to Platinum Games, although Platinum Games is a much larger studio with multiple teams and making games for multiple companies. Uh, but what, like people thinking that Nintendo should buy Platinum Games because of Bayonetta 3, Astral Chain, like, oh, look at that close symbiotic relationship. Or maybe, you know, this company should buy that company because, oh my gosh, they keep making these amazing games for this platform. And I kind of go, look, that doesn't mean you don't want to be independent because independence allows you to do what you want to do. The moment that you are locked into a single company is the moment you lose some of that creative freedom that some people really want. Some people don't mind just making games for one company, but others kind of sort of get perturbed at the idea of being stuck and not being able to try something somewhere else if you like it. And I always thought the idea of Kojima joining Sony uh, and having his studio be exclusively Sony was always a strange one because look at what happened at Kojima at Konami. And I understand Sony isn't Konami, but bottom line is, yeah, he had a lot of restrictions because he was locked into what Konami wanted him to do. And I, it just always felt like to me after that experience that Kojima, so long as he was doing fine financially and can afford to pay his employees, were not going to want to get locked down again to a single company. Even if it's a company that's treated them well, helped make them make games, let them use an engine, you know, paid them to make exclusive content. Even that being considered... Locking yourself into one company is just extremely dangerous when it comes to future potential and obviously allowing yourself that creative freedom. As an example, a deal with Microsoft would not happen if they were locked into Sony. So why is that deal happening with Microsoft? Well, Microsoft obviously has either an idea for a game or Kojima has an idea for a game. Who says Kojima didn't approach Microsoft with an idea for a game and said, hey, you know, I don't have to just like always be so close with Sony. Why can't we do something with you? Who says Kojima won't approach Nintendo one day with an idea he has that might work perfect in a portable form. And he goes, gosh, when you think portable gaming, you think Nintendo. So maybe someday he'll want to do some project with Nintendo and approach them for funding or, you know, to partner up. So this is what's so cool about Kojima is that I think he's learned from the past that being locked into a single company, at least for him, is not good. So even though he has a close symbiotic relationship with Sony and Sony's going to always let him, you know, do what he wants, basically, uh, because, hey, his games keep selling a lot. Death Stranding sold a lot. Um, also, he's not going to join Sony. I, I think it'll be a cold day in hell before Kojima lets his company be bought out by any of the platform holders. So I don't know. I just wanted to cover this story because I find it fascinating how the rumor mill happens, the speculation happens, and then the man himself just comes out and says, uh, no. Like, I understand why you might have associated my tweets and other things. Like, like he gets why people are connecting the dots, but he also says people are basically just reading way the hell too much into this. We remain an independent studio. We've always been an independent studio. We have no plans to be acquired by anybody because of course you don't. Why would you want to be locked in after dealing with that for a majority of your career? Stay independent, still get these companies to help support you in fun games, and enjoy making whatever the hell you damn well feel like. You'll be able to do that so long as you keep making quality products. You make quality products that sell well, and companies are going to keep wanting to fund your game. So, not really a problem. I think he's doing just fine. I mean, gosh, they made one game since he's left Konami, and that one game has sold incredibly well. So, yeah, let's just let the man and his team do whatever the hell they're doing, work out the deals that they're working out, okay? Yeah, he's going to make a future PlayStation exclusive game at some point, I'm sure. But hey, if he makes an exclusive Xbox game next, who cares? Let the man do what the man wants to do. You know, I say the same thing for, you know, people like Sakurai. Let's say Sakurai doesn't want to do Smash anymore or doesn't want to do Kirby. Let's say him and his development team want to make a game for some other platform. Let him do it. Who cares? He doesn't work for Nintendo. Sakurai's 100% independent. So, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm i kind of of mind that let the creative heads do what they want. Like if Shigeru Miyamoto, which sounds insane, wants to leave Nintendo one day and make a game for Sony, let him. He's a legend. He's earned the right to do whatever the hell he wants to do. Now, again, probably never going to happen. He, <laughs> I mean, I, I swear if, you know, on Miyamoto's deathbed, you know... <laughs> 
you're gonna look at his corpse and there's just gonna be like Nintendo flags just popping up everywhere because that guy bleeds Nintendo. But I'm just saying that, hey, let these legends do what they want with what's ever left of their careers uh, because they've earned it. All right, guys, I'm Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, always hype responsibly.